Let's check out a nice functional equation from an Albanian math Olympiad. So we want to determine all functions from real numbers to real numbers satisfying this equation. So we have f evaluated at x cubed plus f evaluated at y cubed equals x plus y times f evaluated at x squared plus f evaluated at y squared minus f of x, y. Okay, so let's dive right into it. So we're going to use standard strategies for solving functional equations, and that is we'll start by evaluating this at special points and then broaden the types of points that we evaluate this at. So let's start by evaluating with x and y equal to 0. So let's see what that gives us. So 0 cubed and 0 squared are obviously equal to 0. So the left-hand side becomes 2 times f of 0. And then we have that's equal to 0 plus 0, which is 0 times, well, this is going to be f of 0 plus f of 0 minus f of 0. So that's going to be times f of 0. But of course, 0 times anything is 0. So after dividing by 2, we see pretty clearly that f of 0 is equal to 0. So there's our first value. So of course, lots of different functions have the property that f of 0 equals 0, but this is clearly one of them. Okay, so now let's move on to the next like little thing that we're going to do. And here we're going to start off by evaluating this with x equals x and y equals 0. And when I say x is equal to x, I mean x is like really free to be anything we want. So let's see what that leaves us with. So we'll have f of x cubed plus f of 0 cubed, but that's just f of s x cubed uh, plus f of 0, which we determined to be 0. So we get f of x cubed equals, so we'll have x plus 0, which is x. And then these two terms will be f of 0, so that's simply 0. So we get that term right there, which is f of x squared. So this isn't really a value of the function, but it is a new relationship that this function has to satisfy. Okay, good. So now where are we going to go from here? Well, in fact, we can piggyback off this to show that the function is odd fairly quickly. So now let's take this relation that we've just formed and let's maybe make the following substitution. Let's replace x with negative x to the one third power. So notice we only really need to say what x is here because this is a single variable functional equation at this point. Okay. So that's going to be f of negative x. That's what's happening on the left-hand side of the equation. Because if you cube a negative number, it's still negative. So that's going to be equal to, let's see, negative x to the 1 third, and then f of x squared. But now if we square that, well, the minus sign goes away, and we get f of x to the 2 thirds. OK, great. But now, where are we going to go from there? Well, now, let's maybe close our eyes and pretend that we just see this portion right here. And then apply this pink rule in reverse with instead of x being negative x cubed, x being positive x cubed. So this is going to give us negative f of x, where I should have said x to the third, not x cubed. So now just like cutting out the middle there, we've got a new nice relationship, which is f of negative x equals negative f of x. And this holds for all values of x. In other words, we have an odd function. Okay, so now where do we go from here? Okay, so well, we've just evaluated this with x equals x and y equals zero. Now let's do some other similar evaluations. So let's evaluate our functional equation with x equal to x and y equal to, well, the next simplest number to work with after 0, which is 1. So let's see what that'll look at like. So here we'll have f of x cubed, and then that'll be plus f of 1 
equals x plus 1 times, here we have f of x squared, and then here we're going to have plus f of 1, and then minus f of x. Okay, good. But let's maybe multiply this out, out this right-hand side and see if we get any simplification. So that's going to give us x times f of x squared, and then plus x times f of 1, and then minus x times f of x. And then next we'll have plus f of x squared plus f of 1 minus f of x. And you might think that we don't get any simplification here, but we actually get quite a bit. Notice that this f of x cubed term is the same as this x times f of x squared term by, well, one of these early relationships that we came up with. So that means this term and this term cancel each other. And then we've got two copies of f of 1 in this as well. We've got this f of 1 here, and then we've got this f of 1 over here. Okay, good. And then, well, maybe what it would be logical to do here is perhaps to solve this for f of x squared. Okay, so let's do that. So we'll have f of x squared is equal to, let's see, it'll be f of x plus x times f of x and then minus x times f of 1. Or if we were to write this out, we would have x plus 1 times f of x minus x times f of 1. Okay, so now let's see where that takes us. So we just determined this value of f of x squared in terms of maybe what I'll call lower order terms. And we did that by using our functional equation as well as some of these other maybe accessory equations with x being free and y being equal to 1. So next up, we're going to take this magenta dot equation involving f of x squared that we just built, and we're going to evaluate this at negative x. So that means we're going to replace x with negative x. So I'll put this in quotes. And so let's see where that'll take us. So f of negative x squared is simply f of x squared. The minus sign disappears. So we have that's equal to negative x plus 1 times f of negative x. And then we'll have plus x times f of 1. So we have that kind of situation. But now let's see. That's going to give us, well, f of negative x is negative f of x, so we can take this minus sign here and swap these. So it'll be a x and a minus 1. Okay, so now while we're at it, let's multiply this out. So we have x f of x minus f of x plus x times f of 1. And then Actually, while we're at it, let's take this other version of f of x squared, which we derived on the last board, and let's multiply that out and put it on the same line with this new version of f of x squared that we just derived. So let's see, we'll have x times f of x plus f of x, and then minus x times f of 1. Okay, great. But look, we get some obvious simplification. The x times f of x cancels on both sides. And then next up, we can move this f of x to the left-hand side. And then likewise, we'll move this x times f of 1 over to the right-hand side. So that'll give us 2 times f of x equals 2 times f of 1 times x. But now let's divide by 2 and simultaneously set a equal to f of 1. So we can't seem to determine f of 1. So f of 1 seems like it can take on any value. So we'll set that value equal to a. And that'll tell us that f of x is equal to a times x. Okay, great where a is equal to f of 1, I guess I should say, and really to check that any such functions satisfy this 
original functional equation, we should probably plug them in. But let's see if we do that. So this would be what we get if we check this. So we'll have a times x squared, or cubed, I should say, uh, plus a times y cubed. But now we can use a sum of cubes formula to rewrite that as ax plus ay. And then um, after that, we'll have a squared x squared minus a squared xy plus a squared y squared. So like I said, I just used the difference of cubes formula. But then next up, what I'll do is I'll take these a's here and I'll move them into this other terms term to give me an a cubed here, an a cubed here, as well as an a cubed here. But notice that this is exactly the functional equation, which was built out of, well, like I said before, the factorization of a sum of cubes. So anyway, this function up here satisfies the functional equation. And we also showed that any function that satisfies the functional equation must have this form. So that is, that's it. We found a solution to our functional equation. And that's a good place to stop.